Okay, so James Baldwin's going to be starting from pole position. Luke Bennett's going to be starting on the front row alongside. And the first race of the ESL R1 Major begins on that race down towards the first corner. Baldwin with a decent launch is going to cover off Bennett on the race down into that first corner. Dives from the, the uh, Williams uh, in the background as they head their way through. It's a decent start, though, from Baldwin. Bennett just about to hang on, but he's left the door open for Marco Payet as they head into the Mercedes Arena section. Yeah, he's got the inside line for turn three as well, which could give him the place. But Bennett's done well on the outside there. They're breaking late to give him the inside for four, and he will stay in front of the BMW. Then it's Payet, McCormack, Benito, Brzezinski in the top six. There's bigger fights behind, but the leaders have got single file. Yeah, it's Kasdorf that's pushing it to the very limit. Once again, the defensive line being taken by, by Luke Bennett. It might allow James Baldwin to check out here as they're starting to work their way forward. Uh, let's see what James Baldwin can do, though. Is he going to clear himself off into the distance? This is the train, though, uh, for eighth position. You've got Erhan Yovsky at the head of it, who's taken a defensive line to Yuri Kasdorp. Yorini Tormel is trying to get around the outside, though, after starting from the back of the grid. He's worked his way past Mitchell de Jong in the early phases, but as we head up towards the Michael schumacher S, let's see if Tormela is able to make his way through. The answer's no. The G2 crowd do not go wild. No, not for the moment, but uh, Tormela has shown good pace in practice. He was the fastest of the BMWs, in fact, during those sessions, and so might be able to make his way through, but it is relatively hard to overtake. Nürburgring not always providing those opportunities. These GT3s, as we've said so many times, so well balanced, meaning that the pace difference is small and that it's hard to overtake on occasions. Tormela will certainly need to though he's on the back of Kastorp at the moment might make the dive here into the chicane yeah Kastorp was out a little bit wide going into one of the corners in the background I think Niels Nyox might have had a bit of a problem there uh, we'll see that one in a moment but here we go here's the attack the defensive line being taken once again uh, from the mouse driver that belongs to Yuri Kastorp he takes the defensive line into that uh, final corner Yoni Tormel is not able to work his way through and as they head out onto the back stretch once again Mitchell de Jong all over the rear end the defensive line being taken and all all of these points are really, really important. Outside line being taken by Yoni Tormela, a bit of a squeeze as well. Contact between the pair of them, just about keeping it on the road. And once again, Kasdorp's able to hang it around the outside. He's going to be on the outside for two and three, though, and that's going to allow Tormela to get through quite possibly. He'll dive deep on the brakes in towards turn three. On the BMW in the inside, he's gotten through just about clear in time. There we he go. moves up to ninth place. Good move, great move from Yoni Tormela once again working his way forward he is one of the drivers that finds himself uh, in the top 12 of the championship but he's not particularly in a comfortable position he finds himself in ninth at the moment and so uh, yes whilst he is inside the top 12 losing points in races like this is absolutely you know it, it is paramount to avoid and so working your way up from the uh, from the back of the grid is important but now he's got a one second gap to Erhan Yeovsky Absolutely, yeah, it's, uh, it's quite important for Tomler, as, as you say, he's only seven points above 13th, which means if he loses seven points, he'll be out of the, the major tomorrow. So needs to make sure that he gets back up towards the front. And keep for Mac Backham as well, who's up there in seventh place. He needs fifth here in this first race to even stay alive. I know that his chances are slim anyway, and he's accepted that, but... Uh, we could see our first driver knocked out even in the first race. Certainly so. You can see uh, Yoni Tormela here driving in socks, uh, having a little bit of, uh, of oh, no, it's not. There's a, there's a bit of distraction happening on stage because of Niels Nyx having a bit of a technical issue uh, with uh, the rig. But thankfully, everyone is able to keep themselves focused. One of those things that happens with the eSports racing. Yoni Tormela, though, uh, now closing in on Erhan Yovsky. Once he gets to Yovsky, though, the, the train up towards Benito is quite tight. You've got Benito, Brzezinski, Backham, and then Yovsky, and he's just about the final points where he can pick up that slipstream. We ride on board with Mitchell de Jong behind uh, Yuri Kasdorp, who does seem to be struggling just a touch. He does. That uh, Audi at the moment just uh, just struggling. Kasdorp has said, actually, that compared to his teammates, he's been struggling to get used to this uh, rig here at the LAN event compared to his home setup, which is, of course, uh, very different. Beneke and Lerner have been able to uh, get that quite uh, quite well. They've been able to get used to it quite well. Uh, but uh, Kasdorp has been struggling with that just a little bit. Uh, at the moment, down in 10th place, Richard de Jong trying to make up those places from 11th, which is just one below where he started. Now, you can see them uh, kind of abusing the track limits here and there. They have a certain amount of track cuts that they're able to take. You might be able to fill us in and more on how many uh, track cuts they actually have. Uh, don't look at me like that. <laughs> you know why. <laughs> it's because you abused it too much the other day. Uh, I, I think it's uh, four and then on the fifth, you yeah, get yeah. a uh, fifth, you get a penalty. 
Um, and if you do it too many times, you get four, four penalties in one race. Don't you? Yeah, I did do that. Uh, but uh, but yeah, these drivers certainly won't. Um, it's it, it's something to note, especially. It's not the biggest problem around the Nurburgring as we take a look at the start, but it will be in the future. Well, let's take a look then at this uh, at this replay. So once again, we can see uh, on the inside line being taken uh, by Luke Bennett, it kind of opens up the, the inside for the next section of corners for Page to go through. He sends it in, but he's on such a tight line here. He's so compromised on the exit that just about that Team Redline car is able to hang on. You've also got in the background uh, yeah, the, the, the battle with the RAG getting down at the inside of Mitchell de Jong and just about almost trying to get side by side off of the Mercedes Marine section. But this was this is the key point in the race because this is about the time uh, when Baldwin's just checked out. He's got 1.2 seconds and looks like 25 points is heading his way. Yeah, it just shows that even at the very first lap of these races, it can be decided at the front because, as you say, Baldwin was completely on, on his own. He was driving to his pace. When you go in side by side like that for second, as Bennett and Page were, then you do have uh, problems and you do fall back a little bit. That's now created the group you can see for second place is behind Erhan Yoski tries to make a move on Mac Backham. Yeah, I'll correct myself. It was Mac Backham in the uh, in the replay, not Mitchell De Jong, but Mac Backham's making his way uh, up the order potentially. Yoski's feeling the pressure to the outside. The Porsche Command is going to go. Could be a fantastic move for the 16, but it's not quite done until they have left the Mercedes Arena section. Yoski oh. dives it in deep and the Macedonians out wide. The cutback coming in from the Porsche Commander. And as they depart the Mercedes Arena section, I think Erhan Yoski is just about going to be able to hang on, but it's not over yet. A bit of a squeeze from Yoski as he's desperately trying to hang on to seventh place in this race. And he's gone very deep in towards turn five as well, which he needed to. It puts him on the inside for six. Backham will get really close to the Audi, almost pushing him out the corner. And now with the hairpin coming up, downhill braking zone as well. There could be another chance, but the Porsche hasn't really got the run to really do oh. that. He gets into the back of the Audi, but can't go through. No, that was just uh, you know, a little bit of a, a wake-up call for the pair of them. Nothing uh, nothing too major. I think it's anything that uh, race control need to get involved in. Uh, they are out in the open, though, so uh, I'm sure uh, they'll, be, they'll, they'll be they'll be dealing with some of these incidents throughout the race. I don't really feel they've actually had too much to deal with through this. It's been relatively clean starts to the, uh, the ESL R1 major as they head their way through. Once again, Yovsky's able to keep himself just ahead, back him uh, behind, but Yoni Tormler looking for extra points. Yeah, and he might be able to get them here as well currently down in ninth. Backham just up in front of him at the moment. I think Yoski's going to be able to get away here as well. Backham has really qualified well, but is just beginning to fall back. And once one driver uh, goes through, then the train begins to really encroach on you and, you and you do start to lose even more. He's having okay. to even go defensive into the final corner, which doesn't happen very often at all. Tumala should have a chance into turn one. Yeah, he's going to rub over the rear end. He's going to get the up and under. A bit of contact between the pair and once again, G2 and Porsche Coanda are pushing each other to the very, very limit as they head their way down towards the first corner. This should be the move for Yoni Tormler. It could be the move for Yuri Kastel as well. Three wide as they head in. That's going to be a very risky move. Yoni Tormler is going to push his way through and he moves up into eighth position. A position and two drop for the Porsche Commander as here oh. comes Yuri Kastel. Side by side between these two and the two Porsche Coanda cars as well. Tormela on the inside with Kastorp trying to keep this, the inside Fantastic. for turn four. Can't quite do it. Yoni Tormela up to eighth place. Fantastic driving in this race so far. Yeah, that definitely deserved a round of applause from the audience. That was fantastic driving from, uh, to be fair, from all three, it was hard, feisty racing. Unfortunately for Porsche Coanda, they dropped back to 10th and 11th. Uh, in this, of course, uh, their eyes will be focused on Joshua Rogers coming up in Group B. Yuri Kazdorp then trying to find his way past Johnny Tormela. I honestly would have said that Yuri Kazdorp was dead in the water earlier on in this race, and yet suddenly he's finding his way fighting for eighth position out wide as they head through the, uh, the, the Dunlop hairpin, and that might just put the pressure on. Like you say, for... for for, for some of these, when they're going for a move, like we saw there with Mac Backham, you go for a move. If you don't actually make your way through, suddenly you're the one under pressure. Absolutely. It happens especially in, the, in these trains like this. It's so close that uh, you can fall back very, very quickly. But maybe this is a little bit what we uh, uh, expect to see from the Audi because we mentioned that it's not so strong in qualifying sometimes if you don't get the lap right. But it can move forward in the race due to its race pace, which we know is very good. So maybe that is coming into play at the moment. Although Mitchell De Jong's looking pretty good as well in tenth place. Yeah, it is. Uh, it is like I say, it's all it's all tight in this group. It's also tight for groups ahead. I did see uh, Dara McCormack getting within two tenths of Marco Pech. Marco Pech is obviously within four tenths of uh, of Luke Bennett at the moment. Oh! 
Tommy Jenny Young's made a mistake almost in front of his teammate. Wow, wow, wow. Using some of that uh, that, that iRacing Rally Cross World Championship pedigree to keep that car on the road and pointing forward. That was a very scary moment for the American. It was. You do want to slide these cars generally, but not that much, certainly through the final corner. He's lost a bit of time now, drops to more than a second away from Yuri Kazdor. Well caught, and the fact that his teammate, Mac Packham, is right behind means that he didn't lose a place. Yeah, certainly so. Uh, yeah, I say if that was uh, Kazdorp Tormula, I would suggest that De Jong's going to lose that position right there and then. But alas, it did not happen. Backham uh, here to assist the team as best he can. Uh, De Jong has an outside chance of going through. And I would say after a race like this, finishing down in 10th position, it might be an outside of outside chance. Uh, there is a look at what's happening behind the scenes. Mercedes AMG uh, also alongside. You can see Philip Stan there and the Porsche Commander bunch all working quite hard, trying to juggle everything left, right and centre. We're on board with Williams, though. And Brzezinski trying to make his way past Enzo Benito. Yeah, important for Brzezinski. Started the day down in 20th place and only, uh, well, quite a lot of points off. 73 off of 12th place, so needs good performances. Probably needs a top five here as well. Uh, but although Benito does too, because he's in 13th place, uh, in the standings at the moment, top five in this race. So uh, looking good for the both of them, although, of course, they'll both want more points, and that's exactly what they're here to battle for. Yeah, you need to fight for every single point you can get. Of course, uh, for the likes of Benito, he's find himself a little bit further down in the championship. He is just uh, about outside as they're defending his way up. This is Luke Bennett, though, looking backwards as his second position. Could it be uh, for the second time that we've seen racing around the Nürburgring in ESL one Could it be a 1-2 for Mercedes, very much on the cards. As I was saying about Benito, he finds himself in 13th. Every single point matters for him. But Brzezinski, he finds himself down in 20th. So he's really up against it if yeah. he wants to work his way through. Yeah, he really is. And so, well, not up against it, but Marco Payet is certainly in that conversation. Looks towards the inside at turn one on Luke Bennett, who's forced to defend. And they're really looking for this one too, a Mercedes. It would be a fantastic way to start off the ESL R1 Major here in Munich. Unfortunately, not able to do it in towards turn one. And that has allowed Dara McCormack to get involved as well. Yeah, but how much will McCormack risk here? How much is he playing? Well, he's all over the rear end. Uh, the green wing mirrors on his uh, Mercedes. Mercedes AMG Team Williams Esports. Yes, it's confusing. They both have Mercedes AMG in the name. They're both Mercedes backed teams, but one of them is effectively the works team. The other one is the Williams run team. A Cormac there, uh, fourth position at the moment. He would like a podium. And of course, we, we do know about the pace of Dara McCormack. He is absolutely rapid, but this is the track that he's not won at. Yeah, absolutely. He's won at the other two. Well, we've got four now, haven't we? We've so got four now. He's won at half of them now. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, not one here before. Um, so so that's maybe a well, it's reflection. it's not changing now, is it? No, it's not going to change now. But maybe that's a reflection on him a little bit more than Mercedes, because obviously we've seen Mercedes do so well uh, around here, the Mercedes team. So, uh, you know, it's, it's hard to know. As we were saying with the drivers earlier on, uh, the cars are so equal now that it really is down to the drivers more than anything. Um, but uh, clearly, Luke Bennett is just l wanting for that little bit of pace right at the end here, coming under pressure from those two Mercedes in behind, Page and McCormack, who are surely going to give him a hard time in the final lap. Yeah, it's going to be tough. Let's see if he's able to hang on. Page is going to look one way. He's going to try and get to the outside, but of course that is not the opportunity. But the defensive line from Luke Bennett might be a little bit too much as they head through the chicane out onto the start finish straight once they've cleared the final corner. McCormack has a look. They've got the one final lap after this. is the end of the penultimate lap. Baldwin's leading. He's gone. He's checked out. This is all about the battle for second, which continues to grow because, to be honest, Yajowski's even rejoining this. And I don't see us getting to the end of the race without someone trying some sort of move as pages are looking to T1. Look at McCormack though. Very late on the brakes, but just too wide in the end from McCormack. Page is just slowed up by Bennett, and that allows the Irishman to get very, very close to that number five Mercedes. You can see in the middle, through the Mercedes arena, they will go in towards turn three. It will just Constantina all together, as Bennett will be looking in his mirrors almost more than he'll be looking out the front windscreen at the moment. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. Again, brilliant racing between this lot. And again, I think it's one of these ones that's going to come down to a little bit of a wire. This is for the, 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 the switch of three or four four points here or there, it would be important 
for Baldwin to make sure that Bennett loses as much as possible here when it comes to points. So he will need Payich to get through because it will help close that gap going into Sunday. Is there any move from Payich here? The answer's no, but he's really close. I suspect there's going to be something into the chicane. This is the part of the team play that we're expecting to see a little bit today, certainly more tomorrow. Those teams that do have more than one driver in into tomorrow, even today, can really, really play off of each other, help one another. Because as you say, Baldwin needs to gain points on Bennett. Even with these 25 points, Bennett's going to score 20 as it stands right now. That's not a big game compared to the gap he's got at the start of the day. Payet needs the points as well. He's only 12 coming into today. Yeah, certainly so. Well, here we go then out wide a little bit there from Bennett as they head onto the back stretch uh, up through uh, the likes of Advan Bogan towards the NGK chicane. At the moment, it's being held by Luke Bennett. There's three tenths between them. There's two tenths back to Dara McCormack. I'm not actually sure anyone's quite close enough to do anything. It would have to come from a mistake and potentially something into the final corner which is currently being mastered by James Baldwin the Mercedes AMG Petronas esports team driver comes out of the final corner and the first victory of the weekend goes the way of James Baldwin he was able to fend off and charge away it all came down to that pole lap he did he has looked phenomenal practice qualifying race win is there anything James Baldwin can't do